Are you looking for a very simple no-code way of doing incremental data copies in Microsoft Fabric? Well, I have a solution for you that is called Copy Job, and it is the topic of today's video. Stay tuned! Welcome to the video, my name is Alexia, and on this channel I cover Max Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we are continuing the data engineering series and learning about easy way of doing incremental copies with a copy job. If you'd like to check out the other videos in this series, the link to the playlist can be found in the description. But now let's talk a bit about the copy job that is quite a new feature in Fabric. Copy job is very easy and convenient no-code tool that allows copying data from place A to B. It is quite similar to copy data activity in the data pipeline tool, but there are some differences that we are going to go through in this video. The most notable of these differences is that copy job allows doing incremental copies, meaning that it can copy only rows that have been changed or added after the previous time it ran. And this is the feature we are going to focus on on this video and learn how we can do incremental copies from a table to a table and from a table to a CSV file and how does the copy job behave in these scenarios since they are a bit different. Also all the code that I will be using in this tutorial can be found by clicking the link in the description. Now let's hop into Fabric and check out copy job there. Now we are in Fabric and I have a TSQL notebook here open and I have attached this TSQL notebook to one data warehouse and one lake house and in this tutorial we are going to copy data from this data warehouse to this lake house here. Also, if you're not familiar with TSQL notebooks, don't worry, since I just made a video about those, and the link to that video can be found in the description. Before we can try out the copy job, we have to do some preparations first. Here I have some code that will create a database schema and some tables that we're going to use in this tutorial. I will run this and create those next. And now the command is running and should finish quickly and it is already done. And then I want to add some data to those tables. Here are a few rows of data that I will add to each tables by using this code here. Let's run this and it should also finish fairly fast fast and now it is done. Next we can check out what kind of data we have in those tables by running these select statements here and they are running and should finish also quite fast and they are done and in the first table what is the customers table we have data about customers. There we have the customer ID, customer name and customer email. In the second table we have some product information. Here we have a product ID, product name and a price and update timestamp that tells when was the last time this product was updated. Then in the table 3 which is the orders table we have information about orders. Here we have order ID, customer ID, product ID, order date and order timestamp. Next we would like to configure a copy job and copy this data to our lake house and then we can query that data from this lake house TSQL endpoint. Let's start the configuration and let's go to create and here we can find the copy job and we can name our copy job and next we will start to configure this copy job and here we can see the currently supported sources for our copy job. We can use SQL Server Database, Azure SQL Database, Azure Blob Storages, Azure Data Lake Storages and Amazon S3 Buckets. So many of these very common data sources are already supported in the copy job. But in this case I want to use our data warehouse as our source. So I will select that and it, that is there the warehouse fabric DE series and I will pick that. And next it will load up this choose data section of the copy job where we select which data we want to bring from this data warehouse to our copy job. And here we can see all the data that is available in our data warehouse to be used here in the copy job. We can see that we have some views there and we have some tables there. And now we are interested in these customers, orders and products tables that I just created there. And we can pick those. Also it is good to know that we can configure things also on column level and not just pick all the columns we have available and we can select which columns we want. But in this case I want to pick all the columns that I have in those tables so I don't exclude any columns from this selection. So now we are ready to proceed forward with the configuration. Next we are configuring configuring our destination and to this I want to select my lake house here and then we would need to do some data mapping here and you can see that we can also create a copy job that copies data to files but in this case we want to copy data to tables and here we configure the mapping for those and as we can see this 
automatically creates mapping for the similar named tables to the lake house side. Also we can edit this mapping here if we want and also edit the column level mapping here as well if we are interested in editing that. But in this case I'm not going to touch these settings but it's good to know that we have this options here so you can edit these mappings if you have a need to do so. But yeah this automatic mapping already looks good for my purposes here. Let's click next and here we select the copy job mode and here we have three options full copy, incremental copy and stream copy that is not yet available for us to use. But I'm hoping that it will be available soon so I can make a video on that in the near future as well. But basically the full copy would copy all the data from our source to our destination and would act in very similar fashion as the copy data activity in the data pipeline tool. But then we have this incremental copy that we are now interested in. This initially copies all the data, but subsequent that runs only copy the changes. Basically we can use this to copy just the changed data every time our copy job runs. Of course during the first run it will copy all the data that we have available. And how does this increment copy work? We have to define column per table that is used to decide is the row new. Basically when this copy job does the first copy it will copy all the data over and then it will save the value of that chosen column somewhere. What was the maximum value it had there that time? And then it will use that maximum value to decide which rows are new. And currently this only supports integer and timestamp values to be used for that incremental copy. And here we can select the incremental column per table that we are going to use. And for the customers table I want to select customer ID. So basically every new customer ID would be copied in the next iterations of this copy job when it runs. And for the orders table we have plenty of options but I will select the order timestamp. So based on the timestamp when the order was made we always copy new orders to the lake house from our data warehouse. And to the products table I want to select the update timestamp. So what time the order was updated so we get the latest row for that. Then we are ready to proceed with the copy job configuration. And here we are now done with the configuration and there is an option to start the data transfer immediately. So if we click save and run it will kickstart the first initial run for this copy job that will actually do the full copy. And let's click that save and run and let's see what happens. And now it will start this copy job here. And I think this will take around a minute to complete when it does the initial run here. So I will speed things up here. And now we can see that our copy job has completed. And here we can see that we read three rows from each table and wrote three rows also. So we copied all the data that we had in those tables. Then this also did an automatic schedule for this copy job for every 15 minutes. And here we can open the schedule for this copy job and turn it off since I don't want to run this every 15 minutes and I will run it manually here. And we can apply that so now it's not running every 15 minutes. And here we have some other options that we can use if we want to tweak or do changes to this copy job. And we can start from this choose data source here. And here we could actually pick some new source data for our copy job if we would like to do so. But in this case I don't want to do that. And here we can edit the mapping for our copy job and do some changes to the mapping if we would like to, but I'm not interested in this either. And here we have the advanced settings tab and here we can find some settings for appending or overwriting the data and also changing those incremental columns that will be used to decide which row is new. But I'm not going to change these settings here. It's just good to know that these are available here to use. But now let's go back to our notebook and let's do some updates to the data so we can see how does this copy job behave. But first we can check out how does it look in our lake house. And here we should see those same tables or the same data we had previously in the data warehouse. And there we can see the same result sets that we had in this query that was queried from the data warehouse. And now we have copied the data to the lake house as well. And here we can do some updates to the data and add new value to the customers table and also update the row in our products table and then also add a value to our orders table. And now let's run this. So we have those changes there. And after this we could try to run the copy job again and see what kind of data it will copy then. 
And now let's go back to our copy job and let's run this copy job. And now it is running. And now our copy job has completed and we can see that now we read only one row per table and wrote only one row per table. So now we did an incremental copy and only copied the data that was changed in our source tables. Now let's go back to our notebook and check out how does the data, data look in our lake house after the second copy here. And let's check out those tables there. And here we can see that in our customer table we have a new row. And then let's check out our products table. But in our products table, we can see that we have here four rows. But if we would query our products table from our data warehouse, we should have only three rows there if we check that. Here we have only three rows. And this was done because I only updated one row there and not added any rows there. So basically the copy job doesn't really recognize that we had that row there already. And this can be a good feature in some cases and a bad feature in some other other cases. But here we can see that we now have two rows for our tablet here in our products table in our lake house. And since we now have four rows in our products table in our lake house, and if we would like to use this data, we would have to consider the updated timestamp and only select the latest one of those in order to avoid duplicates when reporting this data or doing something else with it. And then let's check out our table three, where we have those four rows like we had in our first table as well since to that table we inserted data and not update data like we did for our products table. Next I would like to show you how we can use the copy job to copy data to CSV files instead of tables. But before we do that I would like to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I'd like to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Max Fabric content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's continue with the video. Next, I would like to configure another copy job. And this time we are going to copy data to files. And let's create our second copy job here. The beginning of this configuration will be the same as we did before. So let's select our data warehouse here. And then we are going to select the same tables that we used previously. Let's select those tables and then let's click next. And as our destination, we are also going to select the lake house that we used, but this time we are going to use the files instead of tables here. And here we can specify the folder path where we want to write those files in our lake house. And here I will specify a folder fabric DE series 31. And then we can take a look at other settings. For example, we have these advanced settings here, so we can change the file names by file here if we want. For example, we can remove this Fabric DE series schema name from our file name since we don't really need that there. And then to the file suffix, I want to add CSV rather than TXD. And then we could select the file format to be Parquet also, but I want to use the delimited text this time. And then we can select the column delimiter. I want to use the comma but we have some other options here and then we could choose the row delimiter and also choose if we want to add a header to the file or no. This time I want to add a header and then we could select the compression type if we want to select that but I don't want to have them compressed. Then we can click next and then we can select again the incremental copy and then we are going to select the exactly the same incremental columns that we chose last time. So to the customer table we are selecting customer ID, to the orders table order timestamp and to the products we are selecting update timestamp. And then we are going to click next and then we are going to save and run our copy job. And it will start running immediately and it will also take a little while to run and I will first unschedule this since we don't need to have it scheduled while it's running and then let's wait for it to finish this initial run. Now our initial run has completed and we can see that from customers table we copied four rows since we added some data there in our previous exercise and from the products table we copied three rows since we only updated data there in the previous exercise and then from the orders table we are copying four four rows as well since we added data there. And now let's go to our lake house and let's check out how does the data look there. Let's refresh our file section here 
and there we can see our new folder and here we have some csv files and we can see how the copy data adds this timestamp to the each csv file it writes and we can just preview the data quickly and we can see that there is the data we copied there and now let's go back to our notebook and this time let's do again some modifications to the data and let's add a one row update one row and insert some data to the last table as well and now this is done and now we should have some updates in our data warehouse tables if we run this and we can see that now we have five rows and in the products table we still have those three rows there since we only updated now the price for the laptop and in the orders table we have also five rows here now let's go back to our second copy job and let's run this again and now it is running and i will again speed things up here and now our second run for this copy job has completed and now we copied one row per table that was the expected result for this. And now let's go back to our lake house and let's check out how does this folder look now. So let's refresh that. We can see that now the copy job produced another CSV file here per table, which means that it doesn't update the old files. It just adds new files since CSV would be more complicated to update than a Delta table or a database table. And here we can see that in the original customers file, we have those four rows there but in the new customers file we only have that new row that we added there and with the products we have those original three rows there and then we have that row that was updated and same thing with orders we have those four rows there and then we have the updated row in another file here and this is how copy job behaves if you're going to write some incremental copies to files next let's check out few limitations that we currently have with the copy job there is some limitations with the monitoring and also the incremental copy mode cannot work with the lake house as a source also the row deletion can be captured from the source store which means that the copy job doesn't realize if some row was deleted and it doesn't capture any deleted rows. This would be a nice feature to have at some point so that it would be able to tell if some row was deleted and add some deleted flag when it's copying that row forward or something but maybe that's a little bit too complicated for this simple copy job also personally i would like to see a copy job activity in the data pipeline tool and that would be highly beneficial in my opinion so we would be able to run this as part of our data pipelines and do those incremental copies as part of that but yeah, that is all that I wanted to cover today. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now, I thank you for watching and see you in that video.